So you've probably seen videos where people set up an extra little monitor inside their computer case or somewhere around their computer that shows some kind of stats and information about their temperatures, their speeds, um, their usage. But what if I told you that you could do this with an old phone? So chances are, if you've seen my little B-roll video or um, you've seen some of my other videos, especially the one where I talk about the mouse bungee, you would have seen this little guy. And what it is, is um, my TV actually came with a tablet um, that doesn't really get used because it was a remote, um, but I just used my phone as the remote instead of using this tablet. So now I actually use this tablet as a monitor uh, for both my computers at the same time. So the red is my gaming compu uh, computer and the blue is my server. And it is a really awesome tool. Unfortunately, this only works on Android, but you can find like a cheap Android phone um, for like less than 50 bucks on like the used market or if you just have one laying around. Um, the thing to make sure though is make sure that it does not have an OLED screen. You want to make sure it's an LCD or an LED. If it's an OLED, then you risk burning in because I leave this on all the time. Um, and OLEDs burn in, so you don't want that. Uh, this one has an LCD, but some of them have LEDs and so on and so forth. For, so make sure you don't have an OLED so you avoid burn in. Now the app itself is called Remote System Monitor. Um, I've been using it for quite a long time. And you get a lot of customization within the panels here for how you want things to look. So you do have to install things on both the Android device and your computer. Uh, on the Android device, you go and install Remote System Monitor. I will leave a link in the video description for that. And on your computer, you go ahead and install the remote system monitor tool, which is util really just utilizing Riva Tuner, which is a very commonly used um, computer statistic uh, like back end. Um, things like MSI Afterburner use it and so on. Um, and then the remote system monitor program just sends that towards the application. So once you get go ahead and install the Windows application, what you're going to do is you're going to open it up and you're going to see this window here. Um, I have mine set to start a uh, server at boot time and make it discoverable so that the, your app can see it. Um, I just have it set to the default port. If you want to go ahead and do a password, um, and save. Uh, so now I can go ahead and open up the program on my phone and we can get it set up on the phone. So once you go to your phone, you'll see any of the uh, computers that you set up the application on. And if we go ahead and choose my desktop here and we're gonna put in that password I put in. And if you want it to save the password, just go ahead and put save password. And now I have access to a whole bunch of information about what my computer is doing, what the pieces of um, hardware that are inside of my computer. So it tells me about my motherboard, tells me about my processor. It gives me all the information, tons of stuff. Um, a lot of this is stuff that you maybe don't need. So what a lot of people end up doing is they'll create what's called a dashboard. So if you go ahead and go back, you go into dashboards. Now you can go ahead and create a dashboard and you can put whatever kind of meters or dials and information um, that you'd like. So we're gonna go ahead and make a dashboard. So we're gonna call this one desktop. And we'll do four items per row, no problem. So once we get in here, uh, you're gonna go to add server and we're gonna choose the desktop. And now we can go ahead and add a widget so if we go to the gauge here, we're going to do a CPU temp. So let's call this one CPU temp. And we're going to select a sensor from the desktop. It's going to be our Ryzen. And it will be... Our T-Die. And let's set the maximum to 85. My processor never goes above 75, but 85 will just give it a little more space. We'll select the color and go back and we close it. 
and there we go now it is displaying my cpu temperature if we want to go ahead and add another one you just swipe over from the left add another widget let's do a graph we'll call this one usage we will go ahead and go back to my ryzen CPU total, maximum 100%. Let's do this one in green. And go back and close. And now you see my CPU usage. So it's really easy. If you go ahead and enable rotation, you can get a larger view of the widgets, which is obviously really helpful. And now you can set it up exactly the way you want it. Uh, you got a lot of options. You have a lot of sensors that you can work with. And again, I will show what mine looks like on the screen here. This is for my gaming computer and my server, which also serves as my streaming computer. And having them both there, super helpful. Uh, if something starts to get a little choppy, I can look down and take a look at maybe what's, what's flying off the charts a little bit and what's a little bit out of the ordinary. Um, if I hear my fans ramp up, I can take a look at, um, is it because of the temperatures up? Um, you know, is it because my usage is spiked? So on and so forth. It's a really nice thing. And I think it just looks really nice on my desk. And I really do, uh, appreciate just having that information just to quickly look at. Now, if you've got a spare old tablet, you can make an even larger, uh, display for this which I've been debating on doing with one of my old Android tablets that I've had sitting around, like an old Samsung or something. Um, so I might do that as well, but have fun, play around with it, choose the kind of widgets you like. Um, if you guys would don't mind, share your configurations below. I'd love to see some images of them, you know, upload it to Imgur and post the link uh, down in the description. Um, it'd be really cool to see like what other people have set up and like what kind of information everybody likes to see, what kind of sensors and all that kind of stuff. It'd be really cool. And that's it. That's the way to get your remote system monitor set up on your phone or tablet. And you can put it on your desk. You can put it above your monitor. You can put it anywhere in which this is the really nice way. The, the way that a lot of other people do it with the little LCD screen, um, is usually attached via an HDMI cable. To your computer and using it as an alternate monitor uh, and when you do that you kind of lose functionality um, you don't really get the flexibility of putting it wherever you want because on your phone it's wi-fi or on the android device it's wi-fi but those ones are tethered to the computer so you don't really have the flexibility of putting it wherever you want as always i hope you found this video useful if you did please consider giving me a thumbs up liking the video maybe hitting the subscribe button uh, if you want to be notified of future videos hit that bell icon um, i am doing a computer series video coming up soon about what to do before building a computer, the essential parts of a computer and what they all do, um, some recommendations on when building a computer, what kind of things you need to consider. I'll do a build uh, video and then I'll do a what to do after you've built your computer video as well. So if you want to be informed when those go up, hit that bell icon to be notified. As always, I stream on Twitch from Friday until Tuesday. Come check me out. Come say hello. Love to see you in the chat. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to throw them in there. You can throw them in the comment section below, or you can go ahead and join our Discord. It'd be nice to see you in there. We can have a little bit more of a discussion in the Discord or on my stream. Again, I hope you appreciated the video. Thank you for watching until the end. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you next Friday.